Despite not necessarily being the most useful complication for everyday use, the chronograph has come to represent arguably the most popular complication in all of watchmaking. In addition, being responsible for the creation of some of the most important designs as well. So say you have a budget between $3,000 and $10,000 and are in the market for a chronograph. What are your options? Well, in this video, we look at over 25 different chronographs from this price range that I would recommend. So we're gonna be going in mostly ascending order. There might be a little bit of bouncing back and forth, but generally that's how we're going to flow here. There might be some times where we'll jump back depending on if a brand has something a little bit more attainable and then something a little bit higher end, depending on say the movement on the inside. Uh, we're also gonna be starting around this budget because we actually have a video looking at variety of different watches at the more attainable tier of mechanical chronographs and just chronographs in general. So if you want more information about that and that sounds interesting to you, you have a little bit less of a budget to spend, I'll link to that in the description down below. And one other point I'll mention is that this list is going to have some repeat showing of brands on here, but that kind of goes with the territory with a list like this. If they have one good chronograph, chances are they're going to have another good chronograph. And I find with this genre of watch, having a chronograph movement is tough for a lot of brands to figure out, especially as you start to get into that five to $10,000 tier. So you're going to see the same brands over and over again. My thought process for this list was, I get asked this question a lot and a friend asked me, hey, what chronographs can I consider for this price range or this price range? That was basically what was going through my mind when trying to put together this list. I can't make the decision for you, but I can at least give you some of the watches available in this price range. It's gonna be a bit more comprehensive on the variety of watches, but I can't spend as much time talking about each watch just given the length of this video looking at 25 different watches. In addition to the watches in this video, if you don't have the budget up to $10,000, Tissot just launched a refresh on a racing theme PR516 chronograph, which is really solid value for money. We have a full write-up on their history and the new launches with this line of chronographs dating back to 1968 and made a notable impact on the world of racing worn by many drivers involved in rallying. And further, a version from the 1970s even found itself on the wrist of Roger Moore, a former Bond actor who supposedly loved his personal version of the watch so much, he adamantly pushed to be able to wear it on the big screen in the early 1970s for a role. If you're interested in learning more, check out the link in the description down below to the complete article and the watches on teddybaldasar.com. So there are a couple watches that are under $3,000 on this list, but let's start with where I would say when we're looking at this tier, the first brand that comes to mind, and that is Longines. So Longines has several different chronographs that you can mention here. And Longines history of chronographs goes back very, very far into the 19th century. And then also with their first wrist chronograph and I believe in 1913. And then in addition, also with their 13ZN being a famous military chronograph that is by many accounts, probably one of the greatest chronograph movements of all time. So first we have a military chronograph here with the Longines Avigation Big Eye. So this is based off of a 1940s reference and is going to be identified by that large sub register that is going to be easier to read. This was a pilot chronograph, hence why it was going to have that sub register that could be seen at a glance. So you have a stainless steel option as well as the petroleum blue titanium option. I would say that that is a pretty unique take on the heritage inspired design that also feels very modern comes with a grade five titanium case. You're getting a column wheel chronograph movement on the inside. And the reason why I mentioned Longines is kind of being the first brand that comes to mind for around $3,000 for a chronograph is I think they're part of what represents that standard for this price range when it comes to this type of complication. A couple other Longines chronographs I'll mention quickly as well. I think all of them are rather equal in terms of what you're going for. It just depends on the style you want. You have the military chronograph, but now maybe you say you want some high complication entry while also getting a chronograph. A calendar chronograph combination, that's something you'll see at the high end of high horology, but here you can get for less than $4,000 with the Longines Master Calendar Chronograph. This fuses a triple calendar with a chronograph. You will have to adjust for different parts of the year, so it's not an annual calendar. So keep that in mind, but to have this complication set, combined with a chronograph while still getting a very wearable case. This is a 40 millimeter diameter watch, 14.3 millimeters in thickness. And I know some people are gonna get very mad about, oh, it's too thick. Uh, but think about what I just said, a calendar chronograph, this price range of right in the middle $3,000 range, incredible value and lug to lug of just 46.3 millimeters. So this can be suitable for a dress chronograph despite that thickness and a watch that I think if you are looking for that middle ground of finding complication, looks and value, right in that sweet spot. 
And then the other long jean I'll just throw in here as another option. This was a release from last year, a flyback chronograph. Pretty remarkable to see that under $5,000 and Longines was among the first to produce a flyback chronograph back in the earlier part of the 20th century. So their history and pedigree on the complication type is absolutely there. 42 millimeter case, 49 millimeter lug to lug. Thickness is going to be the big thing here, really literally 17 millimeters. Still getting 100 meters of water resistance, automatic L791 caliber on the inside. And one of the few flyback chronographs you're going to find underneath $5,000 maybe even $10,000 uh, for that matter. Now we move along to a couple watches that are going to be under $3,000. The first is a Pilot Chronograph. This is the Zin 356 Flieger. So you have a few different options here. The Zin as a brand was founded as a Pilot Watch first brand being founded by a flight instructor in 1961 by Helmut Zinn. 356 is their wearable, very traditional Flieger style chronograph. This comes in at a 38 and a half millimeter case. It's a bit thicker. Some of that is gonna come from the dome crystal, which you have two different options here, sapphire or acrylic, and coming with a very compact lug to lug of 46 millimeters, getting nice water resistance here, higher grade movement on the inside, highly tuned and regulation to come along with it. And you do get a couple different options to choose from when it comes to the dial register layout. You have a traditional bi compacts layout as well as a three register layout. But just kind of pick your option here. There's plenty of Zinn chronographs to mention. This is one that I think carves out a unique lane because it fits to their history as well as being a case size that I think might be an interesting package compared to many of the others on this list. Moving right along to another Pilot chronograph is the Hanhart Pilot 417ES. I love this watch. I really wanna do a full in-depth review on it. I don't know if it will get the most views, but I just enjoy what this watch is all about. The history as well as where it's positioned currently for its price and case just over $2,000. This is actually one that should have been mentioned in the previous video. I just didn't think to include it, which is a total miss by me, bad job out of me. 39 millimeter diameter though, 13.3 millimeters in thickness and a 46 millimeter lug to lug. You're going to see throughout the rest of this video that there are not many chronographs that you are going to find in this price range with those dimensions. 100 meters of water resistance to go along with it. You're also getting up magnetic resistance in the process. This is a watch that like its original form of the 1950s, this was a very important military chronograph designed for the German uh, military and air force. Still upholds many of those characteristics that one would look for even back then to be able to look the part, but also be the part when it comes to its utility. Great Superluminova and the whole lore around on this piece as well is that Steve McQueen also was famously a fan of this watch and would wear it regularly. Moving along, we have Oris. Now this is an Oris Divers watch with chronograph function. This is the Oris Diver 65 chronograph. This was recently updated in the past year and now comes with this version with a 40 millimeter case, certainly going to be on the thicker side of things, but 100 meters of water resistance. And I just like the looks of this watch. It's a good consideration for those that want that diving and chronograph functionality. We see a lot of this fusion of aviation with chronographs throughout this list so far. So seeing a diver with chronograph function is seen not as much. You have a Salida base caliber on the inside operating at four Hertz, just under 50 hours of power reserve, still getting 100 meters of water resistance, similar to the standard Diver 65 and pretty clean heritage inspired looks. Moving right along, we have the Rado Captain Cook chronograph. Similar kind of positioning and reason to look at a watch like this as you would with the Oris, uh, finding that Heritage dive watch DNA fused with a chronograph. This one's a little bit larger, 43 millimeters, thickness of 14.8 millimeters and a lug to lug of 49.5 millimeters. I'd say this wears like a 42 millimeter on the wrist, a little bit thicker, uh, but you're getting 300 meters of water resistance. So no slouch in that regard. Automatic ETA A31 chronograph here, sapphire crystal and the Captain Cook DNA goes back to 1962. I think it looks great in terms of a design standpoint with a chronograph, 59 hour power reserve. And I also love with this design how you have this dome crystal and then that slanted in bezel it just makes for this point of contrast for the planes of design that always kind of just registered with me moving along to aviation chronographs or maybe space exploration chronographs we have the fortis novanaut the novanaut is the modern 
representation of the former cosmonauts. The cosmonaut was a watch that became famous in 1994 when Fortis became the official watch of the Russian Federal Space Agency, and that watch was worn into space. But as you would expect with that affiliation, these watches are built very tough, and that is kind of their DNA. You see high contrast throughout, some pops of color just for even more legibility, but then you look at the specs to go along with it. 42 millimeter case, I would say it wears rather true to size, a uh, thickness of 14.7 millimeters, still getting 200 meters of water resistance, and this watch also marks a new movement on the inside for the brand. This is the Verk 17. This was a movement that, depending on where you wanna draw the line, you could call it a manufacturer caliber. It appears to have been produced with La Joux Pere, which makes some very stellar movements, and we're seeing that name more and more in the past couple of years with their collaborative efforts with more brands. Also with this movement, it was tested as you might have guessed in space. Maybe you didn't guess that, but uh, maybe you should have. There's some video documentation online of them doing this. So if you're interested in seeing some of that happen, pretty easy search online uh, to find that stuff. Next, we move to around the $5,000 price point and getting into some pretty definitive picks here. Now we have the Tudor Black Bay Chronos. The Black Bay Chrono family goes back to 2017. But at that time, the watch wasn't resonating fully with enthusiasts. It really didn't happen until 2021 where we saw the updated release of the Black Bay Chrono with the B01 movement and kind of more of an approach closer to the Daytona than the Black Bay. It still has that affiliation. It's not so on the nose. And remember, Tudor Rolex, there's always that connection there. But these watches became fan favorites basically immediately after their release. So 41 millimeter diameter, thickness of 14.2 millimeters. They move the dial within the case to allow it to be thinner on the wrist. So it does wear uh, quite well, considering that it's going to be a chronograph. And you look at the thickness of many of these watches so far, uh, right in line, if not maybe more on the thinner end of things. 49.8 millimeter lug to lug. So wearing, I would say, pretty true to that 41 millimeter case size. Water resistance of 200 meters, screw down pushers, automatic MT5813. This is actually a B01 base caliber on the inside. This was the exchanging of technologies with Breitling, where Breitling was able to get the MT Pelagos caliber put inside the Super Ocean Heritage and in turn, Tudor Black Bay Chrono gets the B01, which for this price range, around $5,500, you get a B01 movement on the inside, incredible value. And a big reason I think why, for those at least know, recognize that this is a watch that is going to be a leader in this price range. So now we move on to some Tag Heuer models. First is going to be the Tag Heuer Carrera Glass Box. This was probably one of the most surprising releases from last year. I didn't see it coming, and it made it more memorable as a byproduct of that. 39 millimeter case diameter. I think that was the first thing that stood out to me, but then the design I thought was also very tasteful. If you found a lot of Carreras in the past years, you basically saw them being almost a watered down version at times of former Tag Heuer, but I thought this was a new, fresh take on the Carrera design while really leaning into a case size that I think many people are longing for uh, in this segment. 46 millimeter lug to lug, 14.2 millimeters in thickness and a water resistance rating of 100 meters. You also have an automatic Hoyer movement on the inside. This is the TH200. Sapphire crystal on top because you know it's called the glass box, why not? Also the Carrera in general is a watch that I would say is one of the most important chronographs of all time without question. Speaking of, Tag Hoyer has another chronograph that I would equally put in that tier but maybe not as mass appealing, but for those that love it, absolutely love it. This is the Tag Heuer Monaco Caliber 02. Tag in the Monaco, they've always had this be a part of their collection. And it's something that I think that regardless of whether or not how you feel about it, you have to admit that there is nothing else like this design. 39 millimeter diameter does not tell the full story of this watch along with the lug to lug of 47.7. This is a piece that is going to wear rather large and it's not going to confuse or try to be anything that you don't suspect it to be. It is a large square watch that is easy to read and is going to create this silhouette that again is unlike anything else you're going to find. 100 meters of water resistance, caliber 02 on the inside Side, sapphire crystal. This is a modern version of that 1969 release. Unorthodox and not going to be for everybody, but can't be duplicated without being derivative. And I think that's why most people don't even try. Now we move to Omega and Omega has many different chronographs, mostly associated with the Speedmaster. Uh, so we're gonna spend most of our time looking at the Speedmaster, but they even have things within the Seamaster collection that you can take a look at. But I'm gonna focus mostly on the Speedmasters because otherwise we're just going to be here all day. And there's so many Speedmasters that you can include if you have a budget 
of around $10,000 or somewhere in that range. First, we have the Omega Speedmaster 38. So this is basically the successor to the former Speedmaster Reduced. So coming in with a 38 millimeter case, it is going to be on the thicker side and a lug to lug of 44 millimeters. So if you are somebody with a smaller wrist and wants to get into a Speedmaster, this might be a great one to go for. You don't see this talked about that often nowadays. So many people talk about the Reduced of former years, but this is a model still in the modern collection as of now. Automatic Omega 3330 caliber. So this is not gonna have the master chronometer certification. It's working off of an ETA base caliber, but is going to be reworked to a very high degree. You're getting a column wheel in the process, as well as getting the coaxial escapement operating at 3.5 Hertz uh, as well. It is going to be COSC certified, 52 hour power reserve, and is going to have a silicon hairspring to go along with it. Moving along, you knew this watch was gonna be on this list. And if you are probably asked by your friend that doesn't know anything about watches saying, hey, I have this amount of money to spend, what watch should I go for? I would say most people would just say, hey, just get a Speedmaster. And this is the Speedmaster most likely that they would mention. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch. This is a watch that probably can work on pretty much anybody's wrist. I had that in that video where I mentioned watches that virtually work on everybody's wrist, and it's true. 42 millimeters might seem like it's too large, but trust me on this, that does not tell the full story of this watch. If you measure it at certain points, it doesn't actually measure out to 42 millimeters. And then factored in with a 47 and a half millimeter lug to lug and the change that Omega's made with the bracelet to shoot straight down on the wrist with the finer links, it is going to look great on a woman's wrist is going to look great on a small man's wrist. It's gonna look great on somebody that is very large as well. It is a universally appealing watch for a variety of reasons, both with its design, its wearability, and of course, its history. But we don't need to talk about NASA every single time we mention this watch, so I'm gonna save you from that. 13.2 millimeters for the thickness here. You have a sapphire sandwich option. You also have the Hezolite version. It really just comes down to what you like more. I will say the Hezolite and the sapphire uh, the, the changes are going to be very minute in terms of what you're going to see from across the room. Minor changes in the bracelet. And then when you flip it around, that's gonna be the big change. You will notice that open case back showing off the coaxial caliber 3861. If that's something you wanna admire, you spend all this money, you wanna see how this watch operates, probably is the right choice to go for. But again, the purest view, I think for so many is, you have to get the Hesolite. So it's a conundrum of our times, the conundrum of a Speedmaster collector, somebody looking for a professional moon watch, but no question, easily one of the best watches under $10,000. And we're talking about chronographs, even more so. So a sleeper and probably another watch that I would quickly mention as another Speedmaster model that should be high on the list for those that have the budget for it is the Omega Speedmaster 57. So this is going to be more in line with the original 1957 reference. You see the broad arrow hand, you see more of this heritage design style that some people might love, some people might not like as much. They might like the purity of the professional, but no question, a great looking watch. And with a variety of different dial colors to choose from, you might be able to find the perfect watch for you uh, that also is going to express maybe a bit more individuality compared to the Speedmaster Professional that so many people are going to have out there. 40 and a half millimeter case, but this actually Actually wears larger than the Speedmaster Professional, but not by a huge margin. A lot of that comes down to the lug to lug of being 49.6 millimeters. I still can easily wear this watch on my wrist, so don't get too discouraged. 13 millimeters in thickness, water resistance of 50 meters, a manual caliber on the inside. This is the 9906. So you have the quick function with the hour hand, which I find very useful if you're going to be traveling. Uh, so great kind of hidden feature of this watch. Flip side, you're getting a nice finished movement on the back side. It is going to be hidden hidden from view a bit more compared to the 3861, but you have that spiral wave across the bridges that still looks the part and does have a column wheel, which can be seen on the flip side with those openings on the bridge there. Now we move along to the Omega Speedmaster Racing. So the racing is an interesting line because you think about the history of the Speedmaster, its original roots in 1957, developed primarily for the idea around racing with the tachometer scale, but ultimately it started to get hijacked because of the whole NASA affiliation that would come in the following decade. The modern Speedmaster Racing Collection was first developed in 1996. Uh, have a variety of different styles to go for, 44.25 millimeter case, thickness of 14.9 millimeters. These wear a little bit larger, I would say larger than the 57 previously, larger than the professional, but still way more wearable than you would suspect. I think the Speedmaster, similar to the case structure of like a Seiko dive watch, 
a lot of these Speedmasters wear much smaller than the case size is going to indicate. 50 meters of water resistance and the 9900 caliber on the inside. And then one other mention I'll have here, and there are so many Speedmasters to mention, guys, it is ridiculous. Uh, but this one also, just because it has a different approach, this is the Speedmaster Chronoscope. It takes 1940s design influence. You have a larger case that, again, wears so much smaller. I would say this wears more comparable to the 57 or the Professional, given its lug-to-lug -lug being under 49 millimeters. Also, Master Chronometer certified, tachometer scale, pulsation scale, and getting a telemeter scale. So triple scale on this watch. More elegant, has a dress approach to its undertones, but if you like these classic, uh, I would say most most affiliated with these is gonna be more of a telemeter from the 1930s and 40s. That's the design style you're seeing here. So if that speaks to you, Omega Speedmaster Chronoscope makes a ton of sense. From Omega, we move along to IWC. So IWC is a story of two different approaches for chronographs, at least for this list here. We have the IWC Portuguese or chronograph, which I think is one of the best looking dress chronographs on the market. The collection of the Portuguese actually dates back to 1939, with this modern chrono being one of the best selling of the collection ever. This watch was recently updated with a new caliber, as well as getting some new dial colors in the last few years. 41 millimeter diameter, thickness of 13 millimeters, water resistance of 30 meters, and a movement, the automatic IWC 69355. It's available for view on the open exhibition case back. It's going to have a column wheel in the process. But I just love the symmetry of this design. It looks so clean. The green dial, the red dial, a lot to choose from here. You can also go for more conventional dial colors that will be under the radar. Uh, just certainly depends on your approach and what you're going for. And then the other important aspect of IWC's history obviously has to be the Pilot Watch design. Here we have the Pilot Watch Chronograph 41. So this Pilot Chronograph collection was updated in 2021, saw some improvements to the caliber as well as the case. And for these watches, clearly looking back to World War II with Pilot Watch design that this brand is so famously uh, known for. 41 millimeter case diameter, thickness of 14.6 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 51.8 millimeters. These are going to be larger watches, but considering the theme, I think they get a bit more leeway in that regard. 100 meters of water resistance and an IWC 69385 caliber on the inside. So another brand that absolutely needs to be mentioned when looking at chronographs under $10,000 is going to be Breitling. So Breitling has a wide array of different chronographs in this tier. Surprisingly, they have one of the most inexpensive chronographs in this range, and that is the Breitling Endurance Pro. So the Endurance Pro is a watch that's developed for athletes as well as being a piece that's very lightweight uh, and can be used for exploration. So the diameter is 44 millimeters and 52.4 millimeter lug to lug. Pretty large watch on those metrics. But these watches are very lightweight thanks to their bright light material. It's claimed to be 3.3 times lighter than that of titanium and 5.8 times lighter than stainless steel. It has a quartz chronograph on the inside. You have a 10th of a second indication for one of the registers, 100 meters of water resistance, while also getting a COSC certified movement on the inside. It's a super quartz, so it's a thermocompensated quartz movement. It's going to have accuracy to plus or minus 10 seconds per year, making it one of the most accurate chronographs that you're going to find on the market. Also will come with a pulsation scale, as this is typically used, again, for athletes as well, maybe being a great doctor watch given the water resistance and some of the other features. And with the help of the hour hand, we'll be able to, with that compass bezel on the outside, be able to help with navigation and direction. But from that, we get into probably the core of what most enthusiasts think of Breitling. You have these pillars of chronographs, and they have, you could argue, the most collections of chronographs of any brand under $10,000. First is the Breitling Chronomat. So the Chronomat name dates back to the 1940s, though its understood form in modern watchmaking can be more directly traced to 1984, but then was reintroduced in 2020 as the contemporary Chronomat that we're seeing here. Some of the classifications, you have that large onion-style crown, and what I think is is probably the most defining characteristic of the modern corner mat, the bullet bracelet, which I am a huge fan of. I was a little bit more on the fence about it at first, but it, it's very unique and unlike anything else. And changing the bracelet is pretty crazy and uh, sizing it up for your rest. But the core principles for many of these is going to be water resistance, going to be very solid, and then Breitling B01 caliber on the inside. I mentioned that we would be seeing this caliber be mentioned and first appears here with the Chronomat. One of the first watches I think of when envisioning Breitling personally. So say the Chronomat is a bit too out there for you and you want more of a conventional approach, maybe a dress-oriented chronograph from Breitling, something that typically isn't associated with the brand, but I would argue they have one of the best in all of watchmaking, and that is the Breitling Premier B09. 
These watches are absolutely beautiful. They are simple, they're pure, they have phenomenal symmetry. And the first one that definitely made an impression on me was the pistachio dial. That is not to say that's the best one, but I really do like this shade of green. So 40 millimeter case, it's a great wearability for a watch of the type. Thickness of just over 13 millimeters, lug to lug of 47.6 millimeters. So dimensions across the board, one of the most wearable chronographs that you're gonna see if you have a smaller to medium sized wrist and want something of this styling. A big reason for making that possible is that this is going to be a manual caliber on the inside, the Breitling B09. Column wheel chronograph, COSC certified like the B01. What I also like about some of these Breitlings too is they don't market the fact that a lot of these are chronometer certified. You have to kind of dig to figure that out, which means less tax on the dial for some of these. And one other fact I'll mention about the Premier family, because I think people don't put it in the same classification and category as some of their other, say, icons. But the Premier actually dates back to the 1940s, at least that name does. And that predates our next watch and name that probably is the most synonymous with Breitling, the Breitling Navitimer. So the Navitimer is going to be the watch that so many people are going to consider when looking at Breitling. It is their icon. If you had to decide on one watch from Breitling that uh, epitomizes the chronograph genre and maybe even the pilot watch genre in this price range, you could put the Navitimer as the number one and you would get no pushback probably, at least no pushback from me. Variety of different case sizes and dial colors to choose from, B01 movement on the inside, COSC certified, slide rule bezel, dates back to the 1950s, and even at the early genesis of this watch, this was basically always going to be tied to pilot watches. It was the watch of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association's official timepiece, uh, really cementing itself even back in the 1950s as an icon of pilot watch design. Moving right along to the other pillar of Breitling's chronographs, we have the Breitling Avenger B01. These were recently updated in the tail end of last year. Different dial colors to choose from, 44 millimeter case here. So certainly going to be larger watches, but 300 meters of water resistance. Some of the most capable do it all chronographs from Breitling, Sapphire Crystal, B01 movement on the inside. I know that people don't like throwing around this word, but these watches always appeal to have more tactical appeal for lack of a better term. Watches have heavy contrast now with this redesigned dial, 70 hour power reserve for the movement. And the B01 on the inside remains as one of the setting of the standard movements in this price category. And then to finish us off, I'm going to look at a brand that I think is probably one of the most unique in terms of its offering, but also historically speaking, one of the most important. This is Zenith. So Zenith recently has seen some of their watches go above $10,000, but there still are some that you can go for at the time of recording this video that are going to fall in this price range. One that I'll mention is going to be the A384 case of the Zenith Chronomaster Shadow. So the A384, you have some different options to choose from. This is going to be the one that probably is the most striking and memorable for those that have never invested investigated Zenith before. You have this black case in titanium, looks stunning with the contrast of the white markings on the dial. Uh, love the way that this thing wears. It almost wears closer to a rectangular style case than it does a circular case. It's like unlike anything else you wear on the wrist. 37 millimeter case though, 12.7 millimeters in thickness and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters. You've heard everything so far, and I think you probably now recognize that that is a unique set of dimensions for chronographs in this category. It's a big reason why I am an owner of a Zenith Chronomaster, because for those that want a wearable chronograph on the wrist, uh, that's where they are going to truly excel, both on the thickness category and then also making available 37, 38 millimeter case uh, diameters in a range that typically you're going to see mostly 40, 41, 42. On the inside for this watch is the automatic El Primero 4061 caliber. Beautiful looking watch, love the way this one looks. Uh, probably a bit more avant-garde compared to the next watch though here. This is the Zenith Chronomaster Original. This is the watch I actually have on my wrist right now. A 38 millimeter case, 12.7 millimeters in thickness, and a lug to lug of 45.9 millimeters. Wears like a dream on the wrist. I mean, I truly enjoy this watch and it's versatile as can be. Automatic El Primero 3600 movement. That movement was unveiled with the Chronomaster Sport uh, back a few years ago. Now we'll be able to track a 10th of a second while operating at five Hertz, 36,000 vibrations per hour, Sapphire Crystal. This follows the format of another famous case from Zenith, the A386. And how I would sum this up for somebody that might be considering the Zenith Chronomaster, you have the budget for it. 
this one specifically, the Chronomaster Original and many of Zenith's watches, fall in a price range that you're not going to find many other case options that are going to have this dimension to them while getting a movement on the inside that is historically going to be as significant of any chronograph movement ever produced while getting a high beat and in my opinion, looking fantastic. But all right guys, that is my list here today looking at some of the best chronographs for under $10,000. I know this is a long list. My throat is very dry after going through this list here, but if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Would appreciate that. That does help out the channel. Also check out teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.